how does a brand new, perfectly good airplane seemingly crash on its own? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here, M0A.com, and you are listening to the Instrument Pilot Podcast brought to you by our number one rated online ground school. Try it for two weeks, totally free, M0A Trial. Dot com. Look forward to seeing you in there. Hopefully you got a chance to watch our Tuesday video here, Lion Air 610. Not in IFR related accident, it was actually happened on a perfect kind of clear and 10 type day, but it happened right on takeoff. And I want to use this and there's, there's so many aspects. Please go watch the Tuesday video if you had a chance to. I'll give you just kind of a quick summary in case you're listening to this years later and, and aren't caught up on it. Lion Air 610 was the first of the Boeing 737 MAX uh, crashes related to the MCAS. MCAS was a feature, is a feature, sorry, um, that had no backups. It was, it's based on angle of attack. If the angle of attack sensor failed, which it did in this case, it, uh, it takes it when there's a high angle of attack and would lower the nose without the pilots even knowing or being able to do anything. It just automatically lowers the nose for you. Doesn't matter if the autopilot's on and like that's gonna lower the nose either way. So MCAS was only listed as abbreviation in the 737 MAX uh, flying manual. Uh, the pilots were never taught about it. The FAA wasn't even notified about it. So this was a big surprise. And I gave everybody the homework uh, to go watch the documentary. It's on Netflix right now called Downfall. Great movie, clearly has a bias. I, I still like Boeing as a company. I mean, you know, if we're gonna go for US made aircraft, that's, that's, about, uh, that's about it in the big commercial space. Um, but anyways, so looking at that, and knowing that, how does this relate now to the instrument pilot environment? Because that's the focus today. The focus of this today is not only knowing our aircraft, but knowing the systems that power our aircraft. Um, let me give you an example. Lately, I've been doing a lot of G1000 flying, actually a lot of G1000 NXI flying, which is the the newer G1000 flying the G6 Cirruses a lot lately. And that's all fantastic. Uh, phenomenal instrument platform. There was a season though, when I was first getting back into glass panel flying, especially NXI, which is just a little bit different. And I went to an entire, I went to, uh, to Wichita, did an entire class um, on, um, on uh, NXI and everything else. And that's not necessary, just overkill. But I went out there and did that. And there was a season that before that, while I knew G1000 in theory, you wouldn't have caught me in it in instrument conditions. For example, I was flying the Technum, which is only Garmin 950. And there was a season where I was only flying that in visual conditions. I wouldn't dare fly that in instrument conditions, let alone shoot an approach in it. Because the theme of this, and I know the MCAS issue, we'll call it a hopeful, never happens again, fluke that everybody learns from, but you have to know and you have to learn everything you can about your aircraft. Now I realized in the MCAS issue there was not even an opportunity to learn about it because Boeing didn't even tell the FAA this thing existed, let alone the pilots. I get that. And, and that could always happen in a weird messed up kind of way. But what I share and why I say this is there is data out there on how to better fly your G1000 or your Avidine system or your 750, whatever it is. If you don't know it forwards and backwards, you're doing yourself and your passengers a disservice. If you think direct enter, enter and follow the magenta line is cross country flight planning, you're doing yourself a disservice. If you think Gosh, I really don't know how to program a flight plan in, so on this long route, I'll just keep hitting direct to each little fix along the way. You know what, I don't know how to load that Victor Airway, but these are some fixes on the Victor Airway. I know how to load those, so I'm just gonna load those instead. I imagine I'm stepping on some toes <laughs> saying that because I've seen pilots do it. I know that happens. That when you don't know your, you know the technology can do it, but you don't know it well enough, so you get these creative little workarounds, and what really happens in the instrument pilot environment is you just end up falling behind the airplane. And I applaud you for your creativity, and I'm sure, clearly, 
you got to where you're going safe. You might even accomplish the, the goal with it, what you're trying to, to do. But if you don't know it fully, you're doing yourself a disservice. Let me give you an example. Uh, like I said, I've been doing a lot of G6 Cirrus flying lately. To the Mike Zulu, as of this recording, is down for annual. So I've been flying the Cirruses from Rex Air quite a bit. Been flying those and really, uh, I'll say getting good at them. Certainly not even close to great, not even close to mastery. An example, I was flying back um, from Ocala, I believe down to Naples. And I was coming in and I'm big into descent management, timing my descents just right, everything else. I know how to do this in 2-3 Mike Zulu, but coming out of, you know, nine or thousand feet, let's say, coming on down, I was trying to calculate in my mind, when do I need to start my descent? Because I'm a little weird with my descents. I like to do a three or 400 foot per minute descent. That way I gain a little bit of airspeed, but still easy on my ears and, and everything else. A little more bit of ground speed. And I, I saw the vertical glide path there. I, I've seen a top of descent appear there, but for the life of me, I just couldn't figure it out. And I was trying going, okay, if I, maybe if I put in, I'm going to runway two, three, maybe I tell them I'm going to runway two, three, it'll know, but no. And I, I thought to myself, you know what? I need to, I'm a, I'm a little busy right now, but I need to go get my, uh, get the, the avionics guide out and look this up because I know it does it. I've done it on accident before. This is what I'm talking about. You have to get such a proficiency, really pushing and working towards mastery in everything that you do, especially in the avionics department. Did you know that JFK Jr. had an autopilot in his Saratoga? The accident investigators and his flight instructor included didn't believe that he actually knew how to use it. Could that have saved his life and JFK Jr. be alive today? I don't know. There's a lot of links in that chain of events of an accident. I often get asked by learners, I gotta use that word now, you're not students anymore, you're learners according to the FAA. I often get asked by learners, hey Jason, there's an ADF in my airplane. Will that be on the check ride? Or Jason, there's, um, there's an autopilot. I've never done a coupled approach. Will that be on the check ride? And my advice is always this. If it's in the airplane, it's fair game on a check ride. Let me rephrase that. If it's in the airplane and working, it's fair game on the check ride. Bad, bad story. Back in when I was in aviation college, I'll say the kids, I'll say I was never involved in such a thing, right? Many over decades ago now, right? I was never involved in such a thing. Before check rides, they would put an in-op sticker on the ADF and the examiner would come in and go, you know, it's so funny, the ADF in these little 172s is just always in up on the day of instrument check rides. I find it so fascinating. I think he knew what was up, but that is what other students did. Other learners, back then they were students, did. Certainly never I. Because if it's in the airplane, it's fair game. Do you know how to shoot an autopilot coupled approach? I mean, you should, because let me tell you, as those who've done their instrument check right already, that's a freebie. You program everything right, that's a freebie is how I look at that. Um, I remember doing my, um, my uh, helicopter instrument add-on and there was no, it was R44, there's no autopilot in R44. I had to hand fly every approach, localizer, VOR, ILS, GPS, everything. And he goes, yeah, in the, uh, in the PTS, helicopter is still in the PTS. Uh, in the PTS, it says you can do one of these coupled, but since you don't have an autopilot, I guess you're hand flying all of them. I'm like, yeah, gee, thanks. I wish, we, and flying a helicopter, you need like three hands and an extra set of legs and eyes and ears and everything else to fly a helicopter, especially in instrument conditions sometimes. Speaking of that, last, uh, last week on the Private Pod podcast and the Tuesday video, we talked about the Kobe Bryant helicopter crash, so make sure you grab that and listen to that if you haven't already. So here is my challenge for you, and I apologize, this is a shorter episode of the Instrument Pilot Podcast. But here's my challenge to you. What technology, it doesn't have to be technology, what systems do you have in your aircraft or are going to have in your aircraft that you're not a master of just yet? Do you know the grueling process we went through as a team at M0A when we turned 2-3 Mike Zulu into the aircraft that it is today? I mean, the, the level of training we, we brought somebody in for, I think, three days to come do the training. We went to the Avidyne factory. We, I mean, we were 
inundated in it. We had a rule, first three months, VFR only. And that's all we did. We shot approaches in VFR, VFR only. No, not even myself, nothing instrument for three months as we worked towards mastery. Can you gain mastery in three months? You can be pursuing mastery, right? Mastery is a never ending quest, I really believe. You can certainly gain proficiency flying three or four times a week, study and focus on the ground. Absolutely, you can do that. So put it in the comments. What are some systems? What are some technology? It could be your iPad, for goodness sake. What are some things that you're just not a master of yet? Because if you're not a master of them yet, they're a distraction and they may not be serving you in the IFR environment. Direct enter enter and follow the magenta line. You're only unlocking a percent of what that beautiful box in front of you can do or what that iPad can really do. Think of it that way. And Missouri Nation, have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.